All right, here we are again. We've got the framework for this rafter layout. And right now I'm going to select this and make it a component. I'm just going to call it common rafter. Create that. And I'm going to make a, another one here. I'm taking the move tool and using control. Moving this rafter over, then I'll take the scale tool. Just flip this backwards, and if I type in minus one, it gives me an exact mirror image of that first rafter. So, so you can see how creating this, whatever dimensions you're using, I'm just gonna make it an inch and a half thick, like it was made out of a two by eight. But you can adjust all these things. The process is the same. You can enter whatever span you're working with. When you draw a guideline to the middle, SketchUp gives you a, a purple circle that shows you you're at the midpoint so you know that the run for this particular rafter is 8 foot 10 and a half inches. Don't have to use a calculator for that one. Oh, there's my material box again. Anyways, uh, but I think that it might be helpful to see the visual of how this rafter is created. Uh, another thing that's pretty typical is if we use an inch and a half ridge on here we need to leave space between these two rafters and with this it's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to jump into the component edit mode, throw a guideline here at three quarters of an inch which I enter as 0.75 and we want a parallel line here just as a guide to click to and now the magic of SketchUp shows me that I can just expand that out. Presto, we have an inch and a half space in there for a ridge. If you were building a, an on-site truss or something and didn't have a ridge, then um, you could just leave the, the rafters meeting in the middle. It's simple enough. So there we have a rafter created for this particular span, 712 pitch, space for a ridge. If you were putting a fascia on this and wanted to have room for a 2 by 6 say, I'm just going to cut down 6 inches. Oops, that's not quite, a, quite what I wanted there. Let's draw a square line here first. I didn't want that either. Why don't we try this? Trying to get a line down here, six inches. That's a horizontal line. That was more trouble than it was worth. Taking the guideline out, and then we'll just shove this little heel cut off there. So that's. Um, Oftentimes a rafter will look much like that. And now that, that that's created, it's simple enough to just measure anything we want on this rafter. I'm going to put a guideline here. And so if you want to know the length that this rafter needs to be cut, just take the dimension tool I want to know from the plumb cut the outside wall. If you were using a rafter table, this is the dimension you would get when you used half of your span. So that says 10 foot 2 and 2764. So how about that? If you want to add for the tail for a 12 inch overhang. Let's get this dimension to snap around. It's kind of got a mind of its own here, but so there's that. You need to add another 1 foot 1 and 57 64 and you can change the, the setting to uh, if you don't want to go down to the 64th you can go up to the window model info and then set your dimensions if you want to be within a 16th it'll just round everything off for you. It just depends on how precise you want to be. 
And so this, the total length of the rafter here is 11 foot 4 and 5 sixteenths, and you want to know if you can get this out of a 12 foot 2 by 4, 2 by 8, sorry. It's simple enough. 2 Determine that by clicking along a point here and a point here. This concept's having a little trouble understanding what I'm trying to do there. I just want to know the overall length of this piece from the tip of the plumb cut to the point of the heel and parallel to the edge, which I'm kind of getting there. It's 11 foot 7 and 7 16, so that tells me a 12 footer will make this. All right, then some of the other stuff you can do, you can determine any of these angles. If you're using a framing square, this this is all simple enough by setting up the the uh, square nubs on the framing square, but that angle there is 60 degrees. If you want to go from here up, that gives you 120. That all makes sense. And... I'm not thinking of any other dimensions that you'd want at this point, but uh, here's one. If you want to know how deep this bird's mouth is, there it is. It's showing up about five and a quarter. If you want to change the uh, settings, you could find out what that is to the 64th of an inch if you want. It shows you how deep that is. That, that dimension comes in. Uh, it's a helpful dimension to have when you're doing a hip rafter. We can also figure out what the height of the remaining rafter here is vertically, which is would be transferred to a hip rafter that's six foot or six and a sixteenth inches. But all these dimensions come up. Any dimension you want to calculate is there. And uh, on it, you can get all those things with a framing square construction calculator, but it's a little less direct. So I hope that accomplishes the purpose a little bit, showing you how to use SketchUp for figuring math for rafters. Hide that. View hidden geometry. Bring our little job site back into view. And all I did on this model was to put some grain texture on the rafters, but what you'll end up with is the dimensions for a pattern like this one, and you'd be in pretty decent shape to go to work building a roof. Thanks for watching.